welcome back welcome back to the sewing nose channel in today's video we are going to draft this trendy blouse can you see it properly yeah we are going to draft this trendy blouse here so stay tuned and stay with me as we draft our pattern so for this pattern we have to try and get this lapping over here and this opening here so in order to draft this we have to have our full front of our blouse pattern normally when we are drafting patterns we use quarter of our body measurement but with this pattern to get it we're going to use half so that is our full blouse pattern okay so I already went ahead behind the camera and I drafted the full flow, full front of the blouse pattern as you can see here. Right, this is the full front of the blouse pattern which we will be using. And I do have to make some adjustments to this pattern in order to achieve it. So stay tuned and we shall draft our blouse together. So I will be, begin by indicating the center line of this blouse pattern, front and back. So it would help us with... Um, it would help us with the drafting of the pattern. I'm not even sure what name to call this pattern, but this pattern can be made for anybody size from small to plus size using your own measurements so this was my basic neck which stopped at three inches and for me that will fit me choking up so i do not want my blouse choking up so i will come down six and a half to seven inches from the neck, the high point of the neck because in the blouse pattern you are seeing how the neck has a sort of scooped neckline but I don't think I want my neckline scooped so I will come down about 6 inches here so at the center front you are plotting 6 inches down there Right, you could make your adjustments. So I will go back on the first of all. You have to choose which side. Although we have the full front of the blouse pattern, you're choosing which side. If it's the left side or the right side, you're going to cut this pattern on, because part of this pattern will be extending to the other half. So I'm going to be working on this side. So I will be coming back. Let's see one and a half inches on my neckline so from the inner part of your neckline i'm going to come back one and a half inches there and that is what i will be connecting to my neck here guys feel free to leave a comment let me know what you need to see what do i need to improve share your thoughts share your views now I am just using marker for demonstration purposes, but you would use a pencil because the marker point will not give you even lines, okay? Let me see so shape your neckline how you would like it to be. So I don't want the neckline shape too wide out, neither too in. So. so that is my neckline at the center front there. If you want at the armhole, because as you can see in the photo, it is a sleeveless. As you can see, it is a sleeveless. So. You can come in like about half inch to quarter or how many how far in you want to come in from the end of your shoulder or if you want you could also attach sleeve to this right 
nice next thing what I'm going to do now we have to form this keyhole we have to form this keyhole here neckline so you don't want it open out too wide and you don't want it too close so on the bust line I am going to come down like about two inch to two and a half inch on the bust line So I will plot two inches down on the bust line. With that two inches on the bust line, I'm going to curve it to give it a better curve. It is nine. I'm going to find the midpoint of it. So for me, it is nine inch from my neck to that point. I'm going to find the midpoint of it, which will be four and a half. From that midpoint, I'm going to go in like about a half inch to try and give it a proper curve because I don't want the curve too wide neither I don't want it too shallow so let's go I'll just use a pencil first to make sure I get the curve how I would like to get it and then I would use the marker to give it a highlight so guys you are drafting this with me Right, so here is where I have right so that is my curve there right so on the waistline now if you look closely at the blouse you will see that it has a kind of ruching over effect if that's the correct word so a kind of where you're kind of fluffing it over your waistline so the blouse has to be a little longer than your waistline so from my waistline on the hip line going down i'm going to measure about three to four inches down right so this is my waistline here on the side going down i'm going to measure it depends on how i'm measuring four inches down Right, because you want to it depends on how much are the fluffing over that you want to get you don't want to make it too with too much fluff for it to look like if it hanged up or untidy looking on you right so you're going to do that on the both sides of your pattern so after i measure my four inches down from the waistline I am going to measure out from that point about two, two to three inches. Now remember, this is a fitted blouse. You don't want it fitting you too tight. So I'm going to measure out three inches for me. And you don't want it overly loose. And then you're going to connect that point straight up to the arm pit. Right? So I'm just indicating here where I will be cutting. You're going to do this measurement on the both sides of the hip line now looking at this pattern here from how it's running you're going to realize it has a flap out you know like when you're making a wrap top of it has a flap so that is what it is so now we are going to form that flap so at the hip line that's where we went down the four inches we're going to measure diagonally out about four inches now this will be to your preference depending on how deep you would want your wrap to cut okay so i will be measuring out four inches then i am going to curve it from the underbust line point to here i'm going to curve it let me see if i can turn the paper so now we're going to curve it now we're going to try to get a smooth curve like this and then we're going to try and flip this curve now from here to the end
bringing it to the end here. Let me see if I find my hip rule. Okay, guys, so minor adjustment to our pattern. Where's my marker? Now, remember I told you on the hip line to come out diagonally the three inch or the four inch. So, when I did the curve, you're going to have a very small fold over a uh, lap. So I'm thinking from the waistline, you come out in that diagonal line to the inches you want, the three inch, the four inch. So I came out three inches here, diagonally. And then I curve from the point up here. And then I curved it down here. I think I'm getting a little more lapped. So... Let me just draw in the line with the marker so you will see what I'm speaking of. Now, not for nothing, I could draw straight. So I'm going to use my ruler to give me that effect. Nice. So we're not using this line anymore right smooth out our curves and thing so this is the line where we'll be cutting on so what i will do now since the fabric that we could use for this could be like satin or silk or rayon or georgette chiffon you know a light palm fabric to give it that flowy effect I will add my allowances on the pattern one time. So when I go to cut it onto my fabric, there will already be allowances included in the pattern. Okay. So let me see. So cut out this. So we're going to be cutting two pieces in this pattern. All right. So we'll be adding half inch stitch allowance along. Here is where we're cutting half inch stitch allowance along this curve half inch by the neck right that is if you want to do um like a facing but the pitya has a piping on it so if you're putting a piping i would not suggest that you leave any allowance right but i'm still going to add my allowance since i'm not too sure if i'll be putting a piping or a facing okay so I'll cut out this picture and then we'll come back in a subsequent video for cutting on the fabric and putting together. Welcome back guys. So we are back again cutting out our top. For those of you who forgot, let me show you what the top looks like. Just another reminder of the top that we are cutting out. So uh fold my fabric on the right sides facing each other so this is a piece of satin that i had there you see the shiny side so we know that's the right side the dull side is the wrong side so i have two yards of that fabric there so i folded it in half and half on the lengthwise green because remember this pattern was cut on the full front of the blouse to get the excess so we cannot fold it on a crosswise grain because we would not have enough. Crosswise grain will be side to side. Right? So let me show you here what I mean by crosswise. Okay. Right? So this is the selvage of the fabric here. You see these final dots you see here? This is the selvage. The selvage runs along the lengthwise grain. To the top going across is the crosswise green so if we fold our fabric on the crosswise green because of this extra lapping out we would not get it so we have to fold our fabric halfway on the lengthwise green like this you understand nice so as you can see here i place my inch allowance my um, half inch allowance right around my pattern 
and then we will proceed to cut two pieces of our pattern on fabric. So we have finished cutting our pattern now so what i will do i am going to notch the center front this line here is indicating the center front so i'm going to place notches here and i will also place a tiny notch here that is just to help with the alignment of the fabric. Okay. Place this. Right. So after cutting the pattern, we're going to have two pieces, which we are going to place back on the right side then what we are going to do now we are going to take one piece of the pattern and put it upside down with the other part okay so let me demonstrate here so this is the pattern okay after cutting the pattern we're going to have two pieces we're going to have two pieces so what we are going to do we are going to take one side of the pattern one side this is the right side this is the right side and we are going to turn it upside down like this so the patterns is opposite each other right then we will stitch at the half inch stitch all our ones to the bottom here let me put two pins we're going to stitch it half inch any in bottom across the new waist that we had extended right after we stitch that there then we are going to well you could need not be in raw edges inside search it up and stuff and then you're going to flip it back up to get the effect so you decide which side you want your outer lap to be right you're going to flip it back up you see here is where you will have the opening and then well before you before you stitch the bottom here you're going to run your bias binding around the center front here around your neck here if you're putting bias binding in the armhole you will run it there you'll do all of that before you stitch to the bottom here then you will flip it up here right so you could put a little clasp to close it up on the neck or after flipping up here you could run the bias along the whole front of the neck right so that is what I will be doing on the fabric here. Um, on the back panel, your back panel is cutting normal. It's cutting on the fold of the fabric. And when you came in in the front of the shoulder from at the neck, your one inch or your two inch to determine your neckline. If you want a scoop neckline, a boat neckline, you're going to come in same thing on the back from by the neck out. If you wanted to bring in your armhole in, you could bring it in and shape it in there. Remember, down by your um, arm, on the new waistline, we went out three inches at the sides. So you're doing the same thing on the back pattern also before you cut it onto your fabric. Okay, guys, so that is it for doing the front of this together. So I will continue and then I would let you see what the finished product is.